Chris with the Meeples Market. Uh, we're going to do a video of the top eight games that Lynn and I have played for the months of June and July. And then we'll have two uh, honorable mention bonus games at the end. Um, if you see me grab a game from my left, that's one of my games that I chose. I picked four. If you see me grab a game from my right, that's one of Lynn's games that she chose. She picked four. And then the honorable mentions will come from over here. So, let's start with my games. Because they're the best. Uh, game number one. Inish. Where to start? I've played this with a few different people. And they seem to either love it or hate it. I love it. First, I love the art. Phenomenal. I love the the fact that you only play with that same, I don't know if it's like 13 cards or I don't know how many it is, but you have that set amount of cards and those are the only cards you play with for the main actions of the game. Obviously, there's the, the red cards that have other stuff on them, but the, the main guts of the game comes from these cards that you're drafting every round and it just turns into a, like once you know the cards, it's like, oh, I know I need to do this, but I also need to do this. She's probably going to want to do this. Do I take this card and try to make the best? It's so good. It's beautiful. It's lovely. You want to fight, but you don't want to fight. Um, it's fun. I love it. Inish uh, plays great. I think at two players, I know some people say it doesn't play good at two. I think it does play great at two. It also does play great at three and four. Uh, number one for me, Inish. All right, and first game from Lynn's list, we have... Uh, Beyond the Sun. Uh, if it wasn't on Lynn's list, it would probably be on my list too. Uh, this is a new game for us. I'm not a big fan of space games. I just not. I don't like that theme typically, but uh, Lynn does, so we had to have this, and I'm glad we got it. Um, it's like a, a, a tech tree game, which I've, I've never played a board game that's a tech tree game. I've played like video games and such that have tech trees, and you get this, and it unlocks like a branching path. And you're going through the, the different stuff, and each thing gives you a bonus, but you need all the prerequisites. That's basically it. And then there's some like space exploration and combat thrown in there, too. Um, it, it has like a bit of a learning curve. And that's the thing, like when our first play, it, I, I didn't like love it immediately. But by the end of it, I was like, oh, this thing's really fun. I want to play again. Uh, so uh, Beyond the Sun. All right. Next game from my list is Dice Miner. Uh, so this, this is a good game. That's what I can tell you. Uh, initially, I was iffy on buying this because I usually like a little bit heavier games that are more involved. And after looking at the gameplay of this, uh, like on the Kickstarter page, it has the, whatever, they have like one of those little animated things. And it's like, the game, throw the dice on the mountain. Pick your dice off the mountain. Score. And I was like, sweet. That sounds like a blast. I need that on my table. Uh, but it's a cheap game and it's new, so we got to try it. And, dude, it's it's fun. It's so fun that I already own it, but I'm trying to get the collector's edition, deluxe edition of it. Because it has upgraded components, better dice that look cooler and stuff. Um, you could... At this point in my life, you could say pretty much at any time, hey, Chris, do you want to play Dice Miner? And I'll say yes. Uh, super fun. We played it at two players, and we played it at four players. It plays differently at two and four. Um, I think it's more fun with two players. Um, it's still fun with four. There's just a little bit more that can go wrong with your plan. So uh, Dice Miner, if you haven't checked this out, I highly recommend it. Great filler game. All right, next game on Lynn's list is Whistle Mountain. Um, I'm less excited about Whistle Mountain than Lynn is, but I still had fun playing it. Uh, we played Whistle Mountain and we played uh, Whistle Stop, like back to back. I thought Whistle Stop was a little bit more fun, but Whistle Mountain is cool too. Um, really different game. I haven't, There's just a lot of stuff Whistle Mountain does that's different. That's why I liked it. I think Lynn liked it for other reasons, but for me, there's like worker placement aspects, but the spaces that you put the workers are like cutouts that are on the edges of the board. So all the actions are on the outside of the board and you place your, your worker off the board and you get to do those actions. And then you're taking like the, the polyominoes and stuff and the tiles 
and you're playing Tetris on this big bridge. And then wherever you put stuff on the bridge lets you like combo actions off of what's touching it and stuff. It, it's really cool. And then the, the water starts to rise on the bottom and it starts blocking off the actions that are in the bridge. Uh, so if you haven't played Whistle Mountain, uh, it's pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to playing it again. All right. Next one from next one from Chris's list is Red Rising. Um, this is the collector's edition, so there's a, a couple of different upgrades in it over the retail one. But uh, I love this game. The reason I love this game is because one of my favorite small games, like ever, uh, similar to Dice Miner, how if like someone says, "Hey, would you want to play this?" My answer is always going to be yes is Fantasy Realms. If you've played Fantasy Realms, you already know what that game is about. If you haven't, essentially there's like different suits of cards and you're trying to get suits in your hand that, that combo off each other. So it could be like this color, if paired with these two colors, will give you this bonus. But if you have this, then it multiplies it. But if you have this, then it completely wipes it out. So you're trying to get these different cards to build these combos so your hand works together. Red Rising is like that thrown up to a hundred uh there's like way more cards in red rising uh there's way more combos to make but then on top of that there's also a board where you're scoring vp uh from pushing these ships up you're getting vp at the end of the game for having the most stuff up in the institute um and then you each player has a there's like variable player powers where depending on which character or, or class you get at the start of the game you'll have a different ability so red rising i'm a super big fan of it I want to play it more. If you've played Fantasy Realms and you like it and you've not played Red Rising, do yourself a favor and get it. Sneak peek. Little little hush hush. We have a copy of Red Rising that we're going to be doing a giveaway for in the future. So, Next game from Lynn is Roll for the Galaxy. Um, so this game's great. If you play it, you already know it's great. Um, I've never played Race for the Galaxy. This is the version of it with dice, and then there's some changes. But uh, I owned this game in the past, and my play group wasn't into it at that time of my life, so I sold it off. And then I met Lynn. She was interested. She likes space games, like I told you. So I bought it again. I love this game. There's dice. There's a million dice. They're tiny. They're all different colors. You get cups. You're rolling the dice, and then you're doing the the action selection. Like you're 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 bidding on the. St it's just it's a wild game. I love this. I think I would call this a classic for me. Um, if you like Race for the Galaxy, I think this one would be more fun. I like I said, I haven't played it, but this has dice in it, so that's that's automatically fun. One thing I want to point out. I'm just gonna bring it up. It, if you own this game. Have you ever smelt the box? To me, the only game, and I've played, you can see there's a lot behind me, and I've played hundreds of more games. This is the only game that has a scent that I can smell as soon as you open the box. And both of my copies that I got were brand new. They were years apart, and they both smelled exactly the same. I don't know what Rio Grande Games is putting in this thing. I don't know what's going on, but it smells weird. Comment and tell me if you've got this. I need to know I'm not alone. The last game from my section is Concordia with Venus. Um, and we got a couple of the map expansions too. Uh, I think we've been playing on the, the Creta map. Um, people have been recommending Concordia and like every Reddit thread, every BGG thread that I see. And I would always look at it and be like, Nah, the game looks ugly. That box art looks hideous. I don't know who put that weird lady on the, the the not the Venus edition of the game box. Whoever made that box art, I can't get behind it. I didn't want it on my shelf. I had zero interest playing it. It looked like just one of those ugly brown Euro games. And until recently, I wasn't the biggest Euro fan. Um, dude, this game is fun. This is a fun game. People say this is a classic. I agree. I want to play it more. I liked it more than Lynn liked it, but it's fun. Um, if you've not played Concordia, and I've only played it at two players, 
Um, I've heard people say that it's better at more than two players, but th this is a good game. You should get it if you have not. Uh, the Venus, the Venus expansion adds adds some good stuff to it. We also got the Salsa expansion that adds the salt, uh, which is like a wild resource, which I think we've only played it with that, and I think that makes it a lot better. Like not imagining not playing the game with that salt resource, I feel like it would be a lot less fun um, and a lot more restricted. So Concordia, Venus with Salsa with with Krita, pick it up. All right, the last game from Lynn's Picks is the Yido Deluxe Master Set. Uh, we got this game from Upstart Board Gamer. If you haven't heard of Upstart Board Gamer, I'm going to do a quick unsolicited, unpaid for promotion here. UpstartBoardGamer.com. Um, uh, Drew, he's the owner. He backs Kickstarter games, and he's a company, so he backs them like at the retailer level, and then basically sells the pledges once they deliver for what they would have cost if you had backed it at the time. Um, and you, if you're into Kickstarters, you know that that's a sweet thing because everyone's always blowing up the prices. So we got this from Drew at Upstart. Um, if you're looking for Kickstarter games, check his shop out. Back to the game, Yido. Didn't really know what to expect. All I saw was Deluxe Master Set. That's enough to sell me on a game. If it's Deluxe, I want it. And Master Set to me means like it's as good as it gets. I don't know what's more Deluxe than a Master Set. So we got it kind of blindly. But uh, it's sweet. There's worker placement going on. And then there's like some, some bidding style. Like auction bidding to, to pick your like starter actions and stuff. And then the sweet thing about it is that there's these mission cards and on the mission cards you have like objectives that you have to fill and I don't know I, I feel like I talk about this to Lynn every time we talk about the game and maybe I'm crazy but to complete the missions you don't ever like give up resources like you just have to meet these requirements so maybe it's like have a fan and have this building unlocked and have a geisha if you have those three things you can complete the objective but you still get to keep these things so you can then use those for future objectives. I don't know. To me, it, it, it's awesome. It's cool. Uh, we've we've only played the like the base version of it. There's a bunch of modules in here with these specialists, and those are like specialized workers that have bonuses. I really want to play with those because I think it'll make it even better. Um, but yeah, that's Yido Deluxe Master Set. Pretty sweet. I think there's still some copies left on Drew's website. So if you are interested and uh, you want to try it out, I picked this up. This is this is really fun. All right, we're here with the last two. These are the honorable mentions. Uh, neither of these were games that we picked for our, our four that we each chose, but they're both games that we were kind of like, ooh, should we put that on there? So we're going to go ahead and mention them. Uh, this one is Brew from Pandasaurus Games. Uh, if you've seen our other videos, we've done uh, unboxings and, and, and all that for this. Uh, beautiful game. Really fun. It's got dice, which I've already said a million times. I love dice. I don't really care what you're doing with them. Roll them, use them as workers, flick them, throw them across the room, eat them. I don't care. I love dice. This has it. They're colorful dice. All of the cards are colorful. It's like this like whimsical world with these weird animals that are like a bunch of normal animals combined, it seems. There's potions. You're, you're going out in the forest with your dice and you're getting these resources. And then you can use the resources to brew up potions to give you one-time effects. But you can also tame animals that are out in the forest, and those give you like ongoing effects. Um, and then you're doing area control with your dice, so you're placing the dice to get resources, but at the same time you're trying to have the most dice in an area, because that lets you claim the card and get points at the end of the game. Uh, and it's a beautiful game. The components are nice, and I'm pretty sure you can get this online right now for like $18 around that, um, which is nuts. Like... To me, this game is, this is value right here. So, uh, Brew, pretty cool. If you haven't, I'd check it out. And then the last honorable mention is Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, the Terraforming Mars card game. Um, I don't know if it still is. When we bought it a few weeks back, it's a Target exclusive. Um, 
It might be different now. I know there's also a Kickstarter version. Um, Terraforming Mars, the, the normal game. I played twice. I don't enjoy it. There's, there's too much going on. It's a headache for me. The game takes like a, a lifetime and a half. I could have died while playing that game. That's how long it took. Um, like I kept looking up like, is this the end? Am I, am I over? Um, did not like that at all. And it sucked because I got that one as a BGG Secret Santa gift. So when I got rid of it, I felt bad, but sorry. Uh, Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition now takes like the general feel of Terraforming Mars, switches it up, switches it up to uh, action selection kind of in the same vein as Roll for the Galaxy or Race for the Galaxy, where you pick what you're doing, and if you pick that one, you're going to get a bonus for it. But all the actions that all the players pick get to be taken by everyone. Um, so it does that, and then you build your tableau, and then you're getting combos and all this other stuff. It's a cool game. The downside to this game is that it also plays for freaking ever. Not as much as, as the original Terraforming Mars. Like the Terra, I think Terraforming Mars, when I played it, it was like a, a, a three and a half hour, maybe four hour thing. Uh, I think ours took around like two hours to play. Um, we could probably speed it up. Once we've played a few more times and we know it better, there's also a co-op mode that I heard was pretty good for two players. But uh, I was excited to play the game. We started playing it, and I was like, oh, no, I don't think I like this. But then by the end of the game, I was like, oh, this is pretty sweet. And then the rest of the week at work, I was like, man, I want to play Terraforming Mars and do some more of these sweet combos. So to me, that means it's a good game. So check this one out, too. All right, so... With that being said, uh, that's our top eight for June and July with two honorable mentions. So 10 games for June and July that we played that we think are sweet. You should check them out. Uh, if you have any questions about them, feel free to put that down in the comments. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so you can see more. Thanks so much. Hey. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Hello, this is Chris, testing the audio for our new microphone. Hello, this is Chris, testing the audio for our new microphone. Hello, this is Chris.